All right. Um, let me go over question number. Let me see which one. I'll just, I'll just pick one. This one is for question number thirty-one on module number six. Ex um, excuse the frozen movie playing in the background. Let's see. Test a claim that the mean amount of carbon monoxide in the air in U.S. cities is less than two point three three parts per million. It was found that the mean amount of carbon monoxide in the air for the random sample of 65 cities is 2.39 parts per million, and the standard deviation is 2.11 parts per million. At alpha equals 0.10, can the claim be supported? Parts A through E, uh, complete parts A through E below assume the population is normally distributed. Um, so we have to read that very first sentence carefully. I'm going to go ahead and open up a Word doc so that I can write down these claims. Okay. If you read the first sentence carefully, test a claim that the mean blah, blah, blah is less than 2.33. I'm going to write that down using symbols. They are saying that mean is less than 2.33. So if I have a highlighter and a pencil, oh, I'm going to cancel, I'm going to cross out this part that's not really necessary. What we are reading is that the claim, the mean is less than 2.33. That is an alternative hypothesis because this um, says less than 2.33. It doesn't say less than or equal to. To be a null hypothesis, you need to have an equal piece. When it is less than, just strictly less than 2.33, that makes it an alternative hypothesis. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that this is H sub A. Okay, this is the alternative. If that is the alternative, how do you write the null hypothesis? Remember, null is just the direct opposite of that. So I'm going to have to go with that null is mu is greater than or equal to 2.33. And that's what they are asking for the first part. Okay. Um, mu is, and we're using the simple mu because we are estimating population mean. We don't use p because p is for population proportion, okay? Mu is greater than 2.33. That's a null hypothesis. The alternative is assuming that, and that's the claim being made, right? Um, that mu is less than 2.33. And what, whoever this is, you know, being claimed, the claim is the alternative hypothesis. That was what was claimed. And that's how you can set the hypothesis. All right, let's see. Um, use technology to find the critical values and identify the rejection region. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Stack Crunch so that I can look up so that I can look up the critical value. So look, we're looking at alpha level 0.10, and this is going to be a left tail test. How do we know that this is a left tail test? You have to look at the alternative hypothesis claim. Mu is less than 2.33. So what you are imagining is a distribution that has left tail hided, uh, shaded, and we want, we want to have 10% of the area in that left tail. The question is, are we using normal distribution or T distribution? Okay. Notice they never gave us population standard deviation. They gave us um, the standard deviation is 2.11. That's the sample standard deviation from that sample of 65 cities. Nowhere in this problem they gave us population standard deviation. That's why we're going to use T distribution. Open up stat, calculator, and T. And you, you, if you were watching the previous videos, you, you, you can tell that this is a very important concept. If you do not have population standard deviation, you're going to go with T stat. Okay, open up T calculator and let's see. Um, the degrees of freedom is going to be 64. Why? Degrees of freedom is always one less than the sample size. With the sample size of 65, degrees of freedom is 64. Now, because this is left tail test, I'm going to keep this symbol to be less than or equal to, but I'm going to tell them that I want the area on the left of this particular value to be 0.10. That's the alpha level. Click on compute, and you're going to get this number. That is your critical value. Okay, and they want us to round this to what? 
um, two decimal places. So I'm going to go ahead and do negative 1.29. So anything that is in this red area will be in the rejection region. So this is the picture. Anything to the left of that point will be a rejected. Um, we're going to be rejecting the null hypothesis. So let's find the standardized test statistic T for this sample. Okay. All right. For that, I will go ahead and use stat conscious T stat. We have one sample and we have summary of the data. We don't use Z-STAT because we don't have population standard deviation. Go with T-STAT, one sample with summary. What was the sample mean? The sample mean was 2.39. The sample standard deviation was 2.11. And the sample size was 65. We are testing, the well, the alternative is that mu is less than 2.33. So I just changed the symbol for the alternative that mu is less than 2.33. I can't change the sign for the null hypothesis. I'm just going to leave it like that, but that's okay. We're going to get it. So click on compute and ta-da, there is a T stat. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. Hold on, did I, did I make a typo? I'm going to go ahead and double check. 2.39, 2.11. I don't think so. See, I was expecting to see a small P value, but uh, maybe not. So I'll go ahead and type this in. This is the T stat. And this number is not less than that critical value we identified. So we're going to have to say we failed to reject. But anyways, for right now, let me go ahead and type in that T stat to be 0 0.23. All right. This is not smaller than negative 1.29. So we have to say we failed to reject because the standardized test statistic that we just got is greater than it's not in the rejection region. It had to be in that blue area. It had to be smaller than negative 1.29 for us to reject. It wasn't. So we have to say we failed to reject. So what's the conclusion? Um, when you fail to reject, we have no evidence to say anything, really. So there is no evidence. There isn't enough evidence at the what percent level? 10% level. That's the alpha. Alpha was 0.10. So the, uh, at 10% level, level of significance to... Um, now, what was the claim being made here? The claim being made here was that no, uh, the mu is less than 2.33. That was the main claim, right? So we can't reject the null to move on to the alternative. So we do not have evidence to support the claim that the mean amount of carbon monoxide in the air in the U.S. city is less than 2.33 parts per million, okay? So I always think that very last part is the most confusing because you have to use the numbers that we found to interpret the decision in the context of the original claim. So that is the hardest part, but you just have to read very carefully. What did you, I mean, what was that evidence about? We just didn't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So when we don't get to reject the null hypothesis, we can't say that we have evidence to support the alternative, which was the claim being made. Okay, so that is it for question number 31 on module 6 homework.